Good morning, grandkids. I am here this morning with the first chapter of my story that I'm now writing, The Phantom of the Woods. Last Friday, I reread uh, the introduction, and so this is chapter one. My dad and I were sitting at the kitchen table talking while Mom was washing up the dishes after lunch. Tucker, Dad said, you want to help go get some wood this afternoon? Your mom's out of wood for the cook stove and the fireplace, and old Mr. Dell next door said some of the wooden posts in his barbed wire fence needs replaced. I could use the help. Sure, Dad, I said and got up to get my coat and cap while Dad was finishing his coffee. My coat had a warm sheep's wool lining and my cap was a warm wool which my mom had knit for me and came way down over my ears. I was putting these on as I went out the back door, letting the screen door slam. I had to smile because I knew my dad was inside shaking his head at that. I went into the shed and was pulling out a sled when Dad came out walking over to pull out another sled. We got the ropes tied on to the sled, which were tied onto the sleds, tied around our waists, and headed up the mountain path, pulling them both behind us. The weather was brisk and cold, but the bright sun in a cloudless sky made for a beautiful day and one great for the work ahead of us. We'd be sweating and taking off our coats, I imagined, before we were through. The path winding up through the woods wasn't in the best shape. I wouldn't go hiking for fun on it. It wasn't very smooth with rocks and weeds growing here and there. Once in a while, I would think about cleaning it up. It was only about a mile or two up through the trees and wouldn't take a real long time, but I just never got started at it. More fun things to do. There were growths of evergreens, then some maples and big-limbed trees, those we didn't want to cut. My dog, Razor, was running ahead of us, seeing what he could sniff out for fun. It wasn't long before these Trees began to thin out, giving way to some barren, leafless ones. Their leaves were piled about um, among the skiff of snow that had fallen during the night. The spiky, veined, and curled leaves skittered over the snow patches, and the broken twigs scattered themselves about. Some kind of gnarly limbed trees with knot holes that looked like faces seemed to watch me. Their bark was dark and their limbs twisted and mis misshapen, looking like they were reaching for me. I had to laugh. Hey, Dad, I called out and told him what I had been imagining. He laughed with me, used to the things that my brain could conjure up. I wrote stuff like this down from time to time because I had hopes of becoming an, a writer someday. As we walked over to the tree Dad had picked out, I stopped a minute to listen for Razor. Nothing. I realized that I didn't even hear any birds. Not even a squirrel scampering around in the leaves. Then I heard a far away low growl. I called out to him, Hey, Razor, what you find, boy? His answer was another low growl. He's probably sneaking up on some food or a snake to pester, Dad said. I pulled out my axe and started whacking on a small tree. When Razor came racing past us, stopped and turned around, his head down low, 
looking back up where he had come from. Dad was laughing and said, I think that snake may have made Razor think he was going to be lunch. I had to smile, thinking of what those two must have looked like, facing off at each other, and what a scaredy cat Razor was. By now, Dad and I both had a pile of chopped wood on the ground. And that tree was pretty much a stump. We each picked up an arm load and carried them back to our sleds. Razor followed us and stayed there when we went back for some more wood. The sun was long past the top of the mountain, making it a little gloomy where we worked. Not far away, I thought I saw something moving. I looked over at Razor, but he was still as a statue. His ears were laid back and his tail was tucked between his legs. He stared straight ahead. I stopped chopping and stood there. I could swear I saw something moving out of the corner of my eye. I looked at the trail where Razor was staring. And saw some leaves just settling down to the ground after moving around. No other leaves moved. Maybe there was a little chipmunk on the ground there. I went back to chopping and soon carried another armload of wood over to the sled. On the way back, I saw something again. This time, I could almost see the outline of something, yet I couldn't, not really. But the leaves just below it moved again, just settling down onto the ground. I walked over to Dad and asked him if he'd been seeing anything. Just the trees, he said. What are you talking about? I told him what I'd seen. The last time I know it wasn't a tiny animal on the ground because it was also in the air, like the outline of something, yet not, and it was wavering. Maybe you're starting to have some kind of eye problem, Dad said. I haven't seen anything weird, although I've heard some talk among the villagers about things in the woods. I walked back over to my tree very slowly, seeing nothing weird, but I knew there had been. Is this what some of the villagers had encountered up here? I started chopping again, later carrying another armload of wood to the sled. I felt a movement of my hair, which was hanging below the back of my cap. I dropped the wood onto the sled and read ran back to my dad, calling out to him. It touched my hair. It touched my hair. You're serious about this, aren't you, son? I know you're not one to make up these kind of stories, he said, looking at me closely. No, dad, there's something. I don't know what, but something's in these woods. I think that's what spooked Razor, and it messed with my hair, I almost shouted. Okay, I think we have enough wood for now, Dad said, as he lay a hand on my shoulder looking at me. Let's head home, he smiled. Looks like Razor already had that. Last year, I had built a stall on the side of our house, and we stacked all the wood there and put away the sleds and went into the house. Mom was at the old cook stove, putting carrots into a boiling pot of water. Razor was sleeping near the warm, lightly. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sleeping near the warm stove, lightly snoring. I now wondered if he had seen something in the woods and if he was dreaming about it now. I could hear Dad talking to Mom in a low voice while I was in my room, stripping out of my coat and putting on a heavy slip-on sweater. I ran my fingers through my hair and went into the kitchen. 
The mom looked at me worriedly as Dad and I sat down to eat. I could tell that Dad had been telling her about what I'd been experiencing in the woods. Mom was back over at the stove and dishing up food for the table. Tucker, she said, could you make out anything about what you were seeing? No, I said, that's what was so creepy. Just, just movements in the leaves, something shifting in the air, and then my hair. It was weird. My little brother, whom I hadn't seen since breakfast, came in from outside and plunked himself down on a chair across from me. My mom looked at me and shook her head, meaning no more talk of the woods. Where you been, champ? I haven't seen you all day. Thought you had run away. I grinned at him. He stuck his tongue out at me with a grin of his own. I was out front making tiny snowmen. Why were they tiny? I asked. Because there's not enough snow to make big ones, he said in a voice by which I knew that he thought I was not quite right. My dad and I both busted out laughing. Then he went on. I came in for a while to warm up and worked on some arithmetic before I went back out. Then, wait, wait, back up a bit. I want to know what those tiny snowmen look like, I said. Champ was reaching for some crackers to crumble into his bowl of soup. Mom had sat in front of him, but he took the time to say, Frogs. I looked up as Mom set my suit in front of me, so I caught her and Dad rolling their eyes. Champ went on, like there was nothing else but him and his soup. Then, like I said, I worked on some arithmetic and started, and he started grumping. How did that go, Dad asked. The arithmetic. Champ muttered some, then said, arithmetic sucks. I remember that feeling, son, Dad chuckled. Never was my favorite subject either. I said to Champ, something weird went on in the woods today. Mom shook her head at me with a frown. Uh, I think Razor found a snake he couldn't handle. He came hightailing it down the road like that snake was chasing him. We all laughed. Then I remembered about his tiny snowman and asked, tell me some more about these tiny snowmen you make. I know there wasn't much snow and that they looked like frogs, but how did you make them? I just made up a snowball kind of smooshed it on the ground. I found two rocks and stuck them on either side of one end. I came in and asked Mom for a piece of red or black yarn. Didn't I, Mom? Yes, you did, dear, Mom replied. Then I stuck the yarn around that end for her mouth. She gave me a red piece of yarn, and it looked like a frog, so he was my frog snowman. I think that was very inventive of you, Chael. I wish I could have seen it. Mom asked if anyone wanted more to eat as she started cleaning off the table. Later that night, I lay in my bed with my hands behind my head, staring up at the ceiling. I was thinking about the woods and what was up there. I thought about what the others in the village might have been aware of or seen. Tomorrow, as soon as I was had time, I was going to talk to some of them, especially Mr. Dell. Then, soon, I was going to go back up into the woods by myself. And that's the end of this chapter. So we shall see what happens to him and maybe a little bit more about what's going on up in the woods. Creepy. I wouldn't want to be up there. All right, grandkids, that's going to be all for now. I will talk to you next time. Bye bye.